Been outside all day, as you can see from my sunburned face. It's hotter than Satan's crotch out there. My God, it's hot. Um, camera revolution. Now that Sony has come out with their new turd muffin. Oh my God, you can't say that about Sony. You're just a Sony hater. What if I hate crap? What if I don't actually like inferior cameras? Maybe that would be an intelligent, logical position to take. Oh, bad, everybody's going to downvote this video. And of course, I've never tried to get people to upvote videos, and I'm certainly not running a popularity contest. But let's make a statement here about a camera revolution. Is it really a revolution? It's kind of been creeping up. Everybody's seen it coming, right? Now, the new GFX 100 is out. I've had like a week and a half of testing with it. I've got mine on order. I don't know when I'm going to get it. Turns out demand on that camera is really, really high, contrary to what everybody else thought. And I knew it would be, even though it's a $10,000 camera. It's expensive? Not really. Compared to what? So the camera revolution. Now everything has gone high megapixel. So now we're not in a megapixel race anymore. Everybody's starting to get IBIS. IBIS on actual medium format is a huge help because shutter shake is a serious problem. So now that Sony, and by the way, I want to put a link below. I actually spent like an hour and a half looking at a tremendous number of images straight out of camera from the new Sony A7R Mark IV. I mean, a lot. And they were, I mean this objectively and literally, they were abysmally horrible images. I mean, they were, I mean, not what the images are, you know, what was going on, just the actual rendition. They were, I was actually stunned. They were horrific. I did notice that a, a high percentage of those were from the 24 to 70 G Master, which is a notoriously horrific lens. Um, the one good image looked like a, a 135 millimeter uh, G Master lens, and it's hard to screw up a 135 millimeter lens optically by anybody. But now that there's a revolution on way, and it's really kind of come, you know, full fruition until there's a new technology, which of course would be global shutters and possibly an RGBW sensor and uh, adaptive resistance technology for maximum dynamic range. In other words, you'll never be able to blow out a highlight anymore. That's coming up after global shutters where the information cannot be clipped and you'll actually be able to do one shot HDR photography with just mind-blowing H mind blowing HDR with uh, one shot photography. But now that the high megapixels are arrived and uh, Sony has a large variety of uh, mostly nasty lenses and I, I do mean that literally. Um, what sort of camera system would you invest in if you actually had the wherewithal to know objectively you know, who has the best service, who has the best reliability, who does an enorm enormous amount of, uh, there's a mosquito in here, enormous amount of firmware updates, a reliable camera that you know is not going to overheat on you and is not obsoleted six to eight months later. What camera would you, and if you had, say, a pile of cash and you had no cameras and lenses at all, and you knew a lot more than you know now because whatever it is you think you know, unless you stay on top of cameras all the time like a handful of us schmucks, on YouTube do. Huh? Let's face it, that's what we do. And you know, unless you were delving into cameras all the damn time, and let's face it, you got a wife and kids and a normal job and you can't be doing crap like that. And that's what me and a handful of other people are supposed to be doing. What would you actually buy if you knew a lot about cameras? You know, you had a pile of money and no cameras and lenses. What system would you actually invest in? Say you were given Sixty thousand dollars. So like, man, you could really hit it home. I mean, what would you invest in? I mean, we got high megapixels now with the Sony system, and of course we have uh, a GFX 100 now with IBIS, and uh, basically you can do uh, sports action while you can do all sorts of stuff that you could never do with medium format before. And by the way, the GFX lenses I own, all of them are incredible, and I've got hundreds of Nikkor lenses, literally. I just got over like 530 lenses in total, which I know is absolutely BS crazy. But I mean, that's what I have. About 40% of those are pretty cheap. I mean, stuff I got for like 60 bucks or less. So, you know, realistically, really hardcore, good, expensive, decent lenses, like about 250 or so. Um, would you invest in Nikon? Canon's got its thumb up its butt. Well, I actually love Panasonic a lot. Their camera, the new uh, S1, is extremely sexy. I mean, it's got crap autofocus, and I knew it would. I was 100% accurate on what it would be. I know they're working on improving that, but, I mean, it's a first-generation product, and 
while it's sexy and it's got great buttons and ergos and whatnot, I've had my hands on it a couple times, nobody's buying the damn thing. Nobody wants it. Almost nobody's shooting micro four thirds. Well, almost nobody. But I mean, with the camera revolution, why doesn't anybody talk about the ecosystem? Um, Sony people seem to be, actually they don't seem to be, they are, the most myopic, the most short-sighted when it comes to a camera. They are really wowed by a spec sheet. And a camera is not a sensor. It doesn't matter if it's Sony or Fujifilm or anybody else. A camera is never a sensor. In the car engine analogy, a sensor is even about half the engine. It's not the entire engine even. The rest of it's 80 converters, SNR firmware, and processing on the main board. This is why Sony images are really kind of horrific, to be honest with you. I mean, I posted a lot of straight out of camera images from the Sony A7 uh, uh, III and the uh, Sony A9 when I did extensive testing on those. And I, the images were appalling, to be honest with you, straight out of camera. They were. They were appalling. Um, I've seen a lot of really awesome Sony images, and that's, of course, working with the RAW files and a lot of Lightroom slash Photoshop slash Capture One manipulation. If that's what you like, that's fine, but not impressive. Um, their customer service is not impressive. The ecosystem is not impressive. They do have an enormous amount of lenses now, but most of their lenses are not that impressive. Um, the reliability is not impressive. Their durability is not that impressive. They still got the worst ergonomics on planet Earth. They still have the worst menus on planet Earth. I mean, and I'll never forget r rubbing the skin off uh, my knuckle here, and I don't have eight fingers, rubbing the skin off my knuckle here between the lens and the camera grip on the uh, A7R3. I mean, what would you invest in if you were, say, given fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000? Now that everything's high megapixel, and, uh, you know, say so you've got 20 or 30 really good lenses, I mean, what would you actually invest in? Especially if you knew a lot more than you know now, and you're actually being objective. Well, I like Sony. Well, why do you like Sony? I mean, I grew up with Sony. I mean, this microphone over here is Sony. This, uh, this microphone actually here is Sony. Um, the Sony corporate ethos has always been the same. And it's really rather horrific. They do make rush to market shoddy products that are not all that well thought out. And if there's a problem with it, they'll fix it in the next iteration nine months later. Sony stuff looks really good on a spec sheet, but in reality, it's a rather an abysmal product. Um, the ergonomics are horrible. Their menu system is bad. The reliability is bad. The customer service is bad. Parts replacement and repair is unthinkable. But that new camera looks really good on a spec sheet, doesn't it? Has all the bells and whistles. Now, the uh, Sony A9 firmware improvements, uh, and of course, I don't know of a single person that wants animal eye autofocus, but I mean, there might be a dozen or so stupid people out there that uh, want uh, eye autofocus for animals. You know, maybe if you're a wildlife photographer and you're not intelligent enough to drop the autofocus point where you want, you know, that would be, well, but you can't do that like on a running tiger or some sort of other animal that's moving, of course, so I can see the benefit of that, but the cameras are extremely unappealing. Objectively, they're unappealing. When someone says, well, you just hate Sony. Well, their cameras, I do, and, but this is for valid reasons. I thought, actually, in first testing the Sony A7R III, I had not had any uh, wherewithal to know about Sony's uh, focus peaking for adapted lenses, you know, stick an adapter on there. I thought, it's got to be as good as Fujifilm, if not better. And I found out even from hardcore Sony fans, you're right, you're right, I got a Sony and a Fujifilm. Sony peaking is nowhere near as good. The peaking is bad. The menus are horrific. Well, you just didn't get used to the menus. No, I actually spent a lot of time with that camera and the A9. I knew where everything was in the menus. It's that the menus are bad. It kept tearing the skin off of my knuckles. Well, specifically, actually, my middle finger knuckle. The corporate ethos at Sony is exactly the same today as it was 20 plus years ago. Idea, rush it to market, mass produce it, do a really fast, hard run for however long 
the sales peak, and when it drops off, you're already moving on to something else, the next iteration. It's really like you're buying a subscription plan. The perfect camera equivalent of what the hell a, a damn Sony is, is like current uh, Creative Cloud subscription, which I have for Lightroom and Photoshop. You know, you got to pay every month for that damn... You can't buy it. Sony cameras are like a subscription service. You pay a ton of money, you get a camera. If it's broken, no worries. You know, we don't have parts. It'll be a new one here in a few months. Just sit tight. Sony's corporate... Sony is not a camera company. They never have been a camera company. Sony has never been a camera company. They're not. Sony's uh, sensor division is spun off because Sony does not make a tremendous amount of money off their cameras. They're making, well, how many thousand fold are they making more selling PlayStations than they are digital cameras? Sony's never been a camera company. They're not an optics company either. Canon, even though I don't love Canon, some of Canon glass is great. It's like, would you... It's kind of like when you go to Wendy's, which I don't go to Wendy's anymore, by the way. And, you know, it's a burger joint. It's like, would you buy a salad from Wendy's? Most people with half a brain would not buy a, a salad from a damn burger joint, would you? Why the hell would you buy a camera from a consumer electronics company like Sony? Why? That is not what they do. It's something that they do do as another line of electronics, because most what, people don't realize what a digital camera is. And this, by the way, is why Sony got into digital cameras. Digital cameras inside are pretty simple. They're a shutter mech, they're a main board, huh? they're a sensor, they have a sensor division, yes, obviously that makes perfect sense, but there's not much in a digital camera. There's the shutter mech, the sensor, and the main board. There are a few other things, but not much, really. It's only an extension of, you know, the consumer electronics that Sony, been in, but they don't understand uh, raw processing. That's, there can be no explanation for why Sony uh, straight out of camera images look so horrific. They're not a camera company. They're not geared towards image output. Not that I haven't seen plenty of really great images from a Sony camera, which have been highly processed raw files by, you know, people that are experts Lightroom, Photoshop, and Capture One. But they're just not. They're not a camera company. And it shows. It's like, why wow, you just hate Sony? Well, I mean, the real question to those idiots that are always telling me that, as I blow dust off of this lens, yeah, the real question to idiots like that who always say that stuff to me is like, why, why is it you think that I don't like Sony? Why is it that you, I mean, is it just like irrational dislike of Sony? Or would it have something to do with their corporate ethos, which is horrific and has not changed in 20 plus years? Or does it have something to do with the fact that they're not a camera company? And they're still not a camera company. They have never been a camera and optics company that has been steeped in photography. They're not. They still are not. Their corporate ethos. Their cameras look really, really good on a spec sheet, but they're bad cameras. They're unreliable, they're buggy as piss, the ergos suck. I don't sell cameras and I don't have affiliate links, you know? If I did have affiliate links and I was running a popularity contest, I'd be kissing your butt right now and telling you to click the link below on the new Sony a7R4. I'm sure as hell not doing that, am I? It's because I don't sell anything. And I'm not sponsored by anybody, so I have the wherewithal to say what the hell I want. There's a reason why I use uh, Fujifilm and Nikon stuff. I pay for all this stuff myself. Some of Canon optics is great, but their cameras are like uh, Fisher-Price squeeze toys. They suck. And everybody with half a brain that is extremely familiar with Canon cameras know that they suck. I mean, they're just, they're, they're pretty sh shitty cameras. They just are. Canon digital cameras are, if they make a, a major improvement sometime in the future, you know, more power to them. Even the hardcore Canon fanboys, I mean, they've been griping and pissing and moaning for two, three years. Like, what the hell is Canon doing? Damn. And, of course, the camera market is shrinking.
But with a small camera market and the fact that everybody's killing each other for the exact same dollar, why the hell would you buy a Sony? Why would you want that damn thing? In the camera revolution now where we actually have high megapixels, why would you choose that beast? You're either not very bright, forgive me, but you're not very bright. You're, you're like a lot of Sony fanboys that are looking at that awesome spec sheet that comes with every new Sony. But you fail to realize that the ecosystem sucks, so does the menu, so does the corporate ethos, so does the ergos, so does the parts replacement, and you're really buying a subscription service. Sony's corporate ethos, well, there's a bug in that thing, we're going to fix it and come out with a A7R Mark VII nine months from now. <laughs> it's a subscription service. Just like Adobe. When you buy a Sony camera, you're in a subscription service. And let me tell you what, forgetting about Sony cameras, of course Sony's not a camera company, and they're not an optical company either, so you really can't point to a Sony lens because Sony has a lot of different people making their lenses. There's not a single damn Sony lens that I've been impressed by. Not one. I'm not, I don't even like Canon, but there's quite a few Canon lenses I'm impressed by, which is why I have this fringer adapter to use some adapted Canon lenses, however, I only have one, the 135mm f2. It's just, it's a type of intellectual superficiality that people are so impressed by the glitter and BS that Sony puts out on the spec sheets of their new cameras. And people fall for that. It's like, how's your Sony camera working? Well, it died, you know. What happened? Well, there was a light sprinkle of rain and... <laughs> Sony is not a camera company. Go ahead and downvote this video, but I don't run a popularity contest. Like I said, I'm free to say what I want, and there's a reason why I don't buy those damn cameras, because they're no damn good. Why, with everybody competing for your money and my money, would I buy those damn cameras? But I could get something far, far superior in a Fujifilm or a Nikon. Why would I? Why the hell would I? I wouldn't. I'm just... Sorry, I'm... I don't mean to sound too egotistical, but I'm a little too smart to fall for Sony's BS and their impressive spec sheets. That impressive spec sheet does not translate into ultimate reality of usage of the end product thereof. And I'm definitely not interested in subscription service cameras. Buy it now, you're going to have to upgrade in eight months. <laughs> it's a subscription service. Bye.